In this video we will provide examples of flight manoeuvres that can help ensure safe and stable performance in a range of configurations and levels of autonomy. This is intended to develop confidence in the aircraft's reliability and readiness for further evaluation or demonstration. The foundation of any multi-rotor autopilot is its attitude control and this is where we must start when evaluating flight stability. The attitude stability test consists of sharp step changes in both roll and pitch angles, encompassing two parts, a level hover to maximum lean angle returning to level, and transitions between opposite maximum lean angles. These tests are done for roll and pitch separately and then both simultaneously. These tests should be conducted at the maximum allowed lean angle and the most aggressive manual command mode. Any change to the tuning parameters or increase in maximum limits would require these tests be repeated to demonstrate these changes have not allowed the aircraft to become unstable in a readily accessible corner of the flight envelope. These tests do not guarantee that an aircraft is unconditionally stable, but instead represent a quick and low cost way to demonstrate an aircraft has achieved a basic level of stability and is ready for further, more targeted testing. Put simply, these tests are designed to cause an aircraft to crash in a safe and controlled space. Therefore, to pass these tests, the aircraft need only complete the test without any obvious or significant sign of instability. The accelerate and brake test being demonstrated here has been done over a shorter distance in an attempt to keep the aircraft in shock. We can see from the data at the bottom of the screen that the aircraft is only achieving 17 metres a second before the braking manoeuvre is initiated. While this is enough to justify a maximum wind speed handling capability of 15 metres a second, the maximum speed reached would need to be increased to justify the aircraft's 25 metres per second maximum gust rating. The attitude control test should be conducted at both the maximum and minimum takeoff weight. It is counterintuitive to many, but multi-rotor aircraft are most unstable at the minimum takeoff weight where their inertia is lowest. At maximum takeoff weight, the power system is working hardest, and this is where some aircraft may not be able to maintain altitude during these basic flight maneuvers, or, in more extreme cases, may fail structurally. Operation at maximum takeoff weight with a hard mounted payload tends to produce a more stable aircraft. Care must be taken when that payload is soft mounted or flexible in some way. A flexible payload of significant weight can change the aircraft dynamics enough to cause dramatic instability problems. As such, the attitude control test should be conducted with any soft mounted payload exceeding approximately 20% of the minimum takeoff weight. Here the accelerate and brake test is being repeated using a fixed payload of 25 kilograms and a total takeoff weight of approximately 52 kilograms. The test looks very similar to the unloaded aircraft but a little more height rise is observed during the braking maneuver. The Callisto 50 aircraft used in this demonstration requires less than half its available thrust to hover at maximum payload. Aircraft operating closer to maximum thrust may experience a noticeable altitude drop during these maneuvers. This is acceptable if it is limited to a few meters and recovers quickly. However, a multi-rotor will tend to lose as much as 40% of its thrust at minimum battery voltage, so this should be considered when evaluating an aircraft. Again, these tests are not intended to fully capture the capabilities of an aircraft, but only to demonstrate that the aircraft is safe and ready for further evaluation.
The attitude control test and accelerate and brake test are done in a manual attitude controlled mode to ensure the roll and pitch angle transitions are as fast as possible. These tests are not appropriate for a slung payload due to the dynamics of the slung mass and aircraft. The slung payload test is conducted in a position controlled mode to reduce pilot workload and focus the test on the specific challenges associated with a slung payload. The yaw control test is important because yaw control can seriously compromise the maximum thrust on many multi-rotor aircraft. This is because yaw torque is created by reducing the thrust output of half the motors and therefore the maximum thrust. This test is demonstrated here using the slung payload but is identical to minimum takeoff weight and fixed payload configurations. The first test here is a simple box pattern in a position controlled flight mode. The box pattern excites a complex swing pattern in the slung low. The position controller must then effectively deal with both the horizontal and vertical disturbances without any dramatic deviations from the expected flight path. A slung payload of significant mass can challenge the position controller of the autopilot while navigating around corners or changing velocity. The swinging payload causes both horizontal and vertical disturbances that can easily reach 50% of the slung mass. Ideally, the slung payload will be attached to the aircraft very close to the center of gravity to minimize the impact on aircraft stability. However, a poor choice of attachment geometry may cause control problems. In most cases, basic attitude control should not be compromised by the slung payload. Therefore, the unloaded attitude control test should be sufficient to cover basic stability. The other danger associated with slung loads revolves around the interaction with the terrain. As the line tension is taken up by the aircraft and payload lifted, the aircraft may be exposed to a sudden disturbance. This high magnitude short duration disturbance can unsettle the aircraft and excite an oscillation in the aircraft control system. In addition to this, the takeoff flight path can result in the payload being dragged along the ground or through nearby obstacles like bushes. The slung payload drag test provides confidence that the aircraft has a reasonable ability to negotiate these incidents without loss of control. The final test is the jettison test. This is normally a trivial test as the aircraft's height control is generally very stable. The autonomous mission test is the same for all aircraft configurations and combines a range of corner geometries combined with vertical and 45 degree climb and descent sections. This test should not cause any attitude control issues during the horizontal flight portion unless the aircraft is susceptible to actuator saturation problems. The climb section of the mission will cause a significant increase in power consumption for the duration of the climb. 
the prolonged high load on the power delivery system means that this part of the test has a heightened risk of power system failure. It is common on many aircraft to observe some instability during the descent sections. This is acceptable provided it remains small. The takeoff and land angle test requires more setup time than most of the other tests unless a convenient natural slope is available. The test is being demonstrated here using a step to achieve the desired aircraft lean angle when in contact with the ground. In this case the test would have been made easier to execute if the raised landing platform was larger, reducing the precision required to land on the platform. This test may not be relevant if the aircraft is always expected to operate from a flat prepared landing area. For more detailed descriptions of these tests and more, please refer to the Multirotor Basic Attitude Stability Test Plan Report.